Dom, let's start with well, let's start with the odds. What, where are they at right now? What are the bookies saying in terms of who they think will be uh, the favorites this week? Well, you can see the odds there up on the screen with Matt. Uh, five to one, Scotty Scheffler. Eight to one, Roy McIlroy. Twelve to one, Ludwig Oberg, who we're going to hear from in just a moment. And then you got Xander Morikawa and DeChambeau. Matt, the the complication here is that there is a pretty clear divide between. Scotty, Rory, and everybody else at this point. Do you think that's fair? Um, yes, I do think it's fair. I mean, I don't think there's any doubt that, that Scotty would be that high. Uh, Rory, I'm not sure if they're not overestimating him a little bit. I mean, he factored again at the Scottish Open. I suppose they're looking at it saying overall ball striking is, is so good right now for Rory McIlroy that he can find his way back to the top of the leaderboard. Um, so that's the only odds that I'm – I mean – you know, having said that, I, if somebody pressed me on it and said, would, would you not take Rory McIlroy if you were, you know, putting together a pool of players that you thought were going to win? Of course you would. So, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Well, I'm just not well, sure. What, if I, is. what I think is fun about it, what I think is fun about it, Matt, is if you look at the odds yeah. and you exclude Rory and, and Scotty, you exclude them, mm -hmm. it is incredibly wide open. Like, the, even the odds makers are like, man, freaking a lot of people could win this tournament if it's not Scotty and Rory. So, I mean, you've got, and, and it's all over the map, right? I mean, there, there's pretty much everybody's between 15 to 1 and 35 or 40 to 1. Everybody. Yeah, so, see, it's, it's just is, fascinating. Why, I, why wouldn't Bryson be higher? Um, why wouldn't Xander be higher? can't lay you know guys in, in the latter two guys that are that are very good in, in total driving which I think is an important stat here I had dinner with a with a friend the other night that's a member here and I'm not sure if this is public knowledge or not but what he was telling me was that they've been fertilizing the rough so they've already had a very wet spring and in, into the summer here so if you when you see the golf course if you're expecting it to be brown the way a typical open course is it isn't there's a lot of green out here. And so you're going to have a, a, a thick, lush, rough regardless. And now on top of that, if they fertilize it, you're still going to get the brown wispy fescue at the top. But it's going to be very thick and penal at the bottom, which goes up to about, if you could, uh, Don, pull me back on camera for one second so I can, I can demonstrate uh, the depth of when you get below that, that wispy top. It's about, can you see it? Am I holding it the right way? It's about that thick down the bottom it's really really thick and it comes in bunches uh, it's not like what we saw at the u.s open where they have what they call that wire grass it is not like what we saw last week at the renaissance for the scottish open where you could go into the rough and the primary rough and get a pretty good lie so what happens is is when when the rough is really thick and they're going to do a lot of of uh, fertilizing in the fairways etc and in a lot of times you get the very, very thick collar rough that, that comes from what they call overspray, right? Right on the edge. Well, this has been a deliberate effort to, to fertilize. And then they move the rope lines a little bit uh, farther back so that there's more room for you to get caught up in this heavy rough. Um, is that a reflection to the last time that the Open was here when Henrik Sensen what was set what was then scoring records with his victory i would tend to believe it probably is so yeah that is that is very very interesting the odds are 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 very interesting also uh, dom i know on this tuesday the tea times are out uh, what are you hearing in terms of notable tea times sure i can you can see the odds up there on the screen for you. the tea times were officially released not that long ago matt uh maybe an hour ago uh i mm -hmm. will just very quickly read a couple of the cool pairings here you've got Let's see, as I scroll around in the morning for the morning wave, you've got uh, Tony Finau, Russell Henley, Matthew Pavone at 925, John Rahm, Tommy Fleetwood, Robert McIntyre at 936. Following them at 947, you've got Ludwig Oberg, who we're going to hear from in just one second, Bryson DeChambeau, who we're also going to hear from today, and Tom Kim, 958, Brian Harmon, the defending champion, Victor Hovland and Sahith Thagala, this is all back to back to back in the morning wave here. 10:09, Roy McIlroy, Max Homa, Terrell Hatton. You've got the new 
Ryder Cup captain for the United States, Keegan Bradley, teeing off immediately following a 10-20 with Will Zaltoris and Gordon Sargent, the long, the long bomber amateur there. Let me scroll down here towards the uh, the afternoon wave, which I know includes um, Phil Mickelson and also Tiger Woods. Phil Mickelson's at 2.04 with Dustin Johnson and Juice Luton. We've got uh, Wyndham Clark, Hideki Matsuyama, and Brooks Kepka at 2.26. Immediately following them, we have Tiger Woods, Xander Shoffley, and Patrick Cantlay. 2.48, Colin Morikawa, Sam Burns, Siwoo Kim. And then I'll give you this one here, and we'll wrap it up here, Matt. 3.10 p.m., Jordan Spieth, Cam Young, and Scotty Scheffler. So that's just a very quick look at what we have to look forward to this week. Very exciting there, Matt. And then before I, I toss it back to you, because I know I want to get to Ludwig, my question of the day was, who will win the Open? And we just showed you those odds. Scotty Scheffler, Roy McIlroy, or I gave a write-in or other option, because basically, as we showed with the odds there, Matt, it's literally Scotty or Rory or everybody else. And right now, 31% are saying Rory, 62% are saying write in or other, if you will. And we've got some folks who've written in John Rahm, Adam Scott, Hideki Matsuyama. Again, it speaks to being all over the map. But only 6% are saying Scotty Scheffler. I wonder if that's because we haven't seen him in a little while. Uh, I mean, could be, but he came off a playoff win at the Travelers. He's won six times, so I don't think you can discount him. Uh, I think if, if only 6% are seeing him as, as the most likely to win, which maybe I, I'm reframing your question because you flat out asked who is going to win. And I do think that Rory's a pretty good. I would probably take Rory over Scotty, but it wouldn't surprise me at all if Scotty didn't run away with this thing because it's about ball striking. Uh, Thursday, the forecast on Thursday, I was just looking at it as you were talking, Dom. It's the winds have, the, the forecast of the winds have gone up to about 10 to 20 miles per hour. But Thursday is a 51% chance of weather. I'll give you the official forecast here. Rain showers early with overcast skies later in the day, high of 64. Winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Chance of rain at 50% as, as mentioned. So the, none of the weather looks particularly horrible. Friday is going to be a high of 65. Uh, low chance of rain. Winds at 10 to 15 miles an hour. Saturday, a high of 64. It's the highest chance of rain right now, and obviously that can change. Uh, and the winds there are 10 to 15 miles per hour. Then Sunday's, again, about 50% uh, chance of rain. Winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour, a little bit higher. So the weather really isn't that bad. 